What is this up on the Sacramento River? Turns out it's what's left of a piece of our past. It's funny, the ferry boats just had some spell on, on, on me anyway, and so many others really too, but you just didn't want it to be over. You didn't want it to end. Okay, still up on the top deck. If you know or remember the San Diego Coronado ferry boats, you'll want to see what one man did to document how one of them passed into history. Ken Kramer's About San Diego, the history and people of the area we call home. Remember those ferry boats that used to cross back and forth San Diego to Coronado? Well, this story is about what happened to one of those ferry boats. Our occasional contributor to this show, Joe Dittler, is a journalist and historian. With funding from Coronado resident Debbie Riddle of Lee Mather Company, he was able to document the final 72 hours or so in the life of a ferry boat named San Diego, which a lot of us rode and do remember well. When ferry boats crossed between San Diego and Coronado, there was one that became a favorite. Joe Dittler remembers that boat called the San Diego. You know, it was one of the big uh, old fashioned uh, slab sided double decked uh, ferry boats that you, you see uh, up in the Pacific Northwest. Now the thing about these ferry boats, up until 1969 when the bridge opened, they carried you and your car. They were just a part of living and commuting back and forth across the bay. The way they looked, the sounds and smells of riding them, as a kid back then, Joe fell in love with all of that. It's funny, the ferry boats just had some spell on, on, on me anyway, and so many others really too, but you just didn't want it to be over, you didn't want it to end. But when the bridge did open, the ferry boats were sold, and the San Diego, this boat, was sold too. And the San Diego uh, ended up going to uh, the Pacific Northwest, where it operated for a few more years, and um, then it was retired. There was talk that maybe she'd come home to our county, be a floating dinner theater, but no, she was in decline, tied up along the Sacramento River. There was a series of um, fires on board and uh, a bunch of artists lived on board and it, the, the ship just kept going down and down and down. Finally, word came that the San Diego would be scrapped. For Joe, it was sad, all those sweet memories of this ship and what she meant to so many people. The whole ritual of getting on board and riding across the bay had so much simple charm. As a writer, journalist and historian, he right away made plans to go north to take a last look. I wanted to go up and, and document it. I thought this was all important, but I think the real thing for me was one last walk on the decks of this ferry boat. Okay, still up on the top deck. What he found was really just a shell of the old ship he remembered from his youth. There was no ship's helm. There was no engine telegraph. Um, the name boards, and she had lovely name boards. You know, she had them all over the place. They were all gone. Uh, the anchors, the chain, there was nothing left. Coming down, I'll pan a little bit over to this funnel that Joe was getting hesitant about taking home in his rented van. And then I'll come back one more time and catch Joe checking out the old stack. He did look around for anything that might be put on display back in Coronado. He found some pulleys used to lower the lifeboats. When we came by, they were being shown at the library along with other items from the San Diego and some things on loan from the Maritime Museum. There was a scale model of the San Diego. For those who never experienced the ferry boats, who never knew what it was like, Joe's trip to see the final days of this one might seem a strange thing. But not if you rode them, not if they were a part of you. It all came back to him as he stood on the San Diego's deck just one last time. I began to just have this flood of memories and I'm telling you, I could hear the slushing of the water as they approached the pilings in the far shore. They'd throw it in the reverse. You could hear the bells from the, from the captain down to the engine room, and then they would respond. Ding, 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 full reverse. Um, you could hear the water. You could hear the propellers change direction. You could hear the pilings creak, and you could smell the creosote on the pilings. Um, it was the craziest thing. I mean, here I am on this abandoned, dead boat that really looks nothing like she did in her prime. And yet all these things were flooding back into my mind and it was, a, it was a very moving experience and I'm so glad that I went up and was able to have that last experience on the ferry boat San Diego. So we bid you adieu, San Diego. At last she was towed ever so slowly to the scrapyard 
This is the last video of the ferry boat countless thousands of us remember. Within the next couple of days, she was torn apart, and that was the end. And so she's gone. And it was a very, it was a very um, sad thing to watch. Joe ended up writing three articles about the end of the San Diego, and there were hundreds of responses, people wanting to share their memories of a time gone by. Their first kiss, riding on the ferry boat at night where you could ride for a quarter all night. When the pace of life was slower, when the wind and tide were part of the commute, when so many things were so very different about San Diego. Images in that story from the Coronado Public Library where an exhibit of the ferry boat's history will remain. Ann Kramer's About San Diego, the history and people of the area we call home. Here's Ken Kramer. From Oceanside to San Ysidro and Pacific Beach to Campo and all the points in between, if you are curious about San Diego, this is the show for you and welcome to it. What we do is discover little stories about this county where we live, curiosities like the one we're going to start with right now, just made a mention of it a moment ago, something strange in the sand. Let's take a look. This is the beach at Coronado, and it isn't just any day at the beach, it's low tide. And at low tide, you can see something out there on the sand, looks like little bumps, rocks. See them? And if you notice, and a lot of people don't notice, but if you do, you see there's a straight shape to them and some corners. Turns out, no, they're not rocks at all. This is all that's left of something that washed up here a long time ago, something big. That something was the Monte Carlo, a gambling ship that had been anchored out at sea but broke loose in a storm on New Year's Eve in 1936. The following day, it crashed ashore on South Coronado Beach. Richard Kenny, United States Air Force Colonel Richard Kenny, remembers he was just a kid back then working as a lifeguard at the Hotel Dell. Yeah, which meant I was picking up cigarette butts around the pool. <laughs> Well, he went down to take a look, of course. Who wouldn't? The owners had abandoned it, and townspeople were grabbing everything from roulette wheels to the Douglas fir dance floor and liquor. Most people that I saw were scavenging bottles. <laughs> that was still booze. That's why the, it was out, outside of the three-mile limit. Here's a chair that somebody picked up that eventually made its way over to the Coronado History Museum, along with a menu from the Monte Carlo. They called it a ship, but really it was just anchored out there. It had no power of its own. When it broke loose in the storm, there was no controlling it. It was a barge with no motor, concrete barge. But in its heyday, ads in the paper made it seem so elegant aboard. Water taxis skidding over the waves, going back and forth to the Monte Carlo to and from the pleasure ship. When it broke loose, there were no passengers aboard, just two caretakers who got off safely. And now, here it was, beached and picked over. About two days later, it was all gone. In other words, people pretty well scrounged it, the, and finally the officials got here and got it under control. Colonel Kenny, a 16-year-old kid back then, didn't walk away empty-handed, though. All these years later, he still got a couple of souvenirs. I got these out of a tabletop, like a roulette wheel cut in a half drawer, and it had a few silver dollars in it. So what can be seen today? It kind of depends on the water level. Almost all the Monte Carlo has been hauled or washed away in three quarters of a century. But on some days, when the tide and the sand is particularly low, more of it shows up. I've walked around it, and once in a while when it sticks up, they come and cut some more rebar out of it or something. It did pose more of a danger in past years when more parts of it would end up being exposed. As to Colonel Kenny, aged 92 when he talked with us, much decorated World War II pilot, POW, he never imagined he'd still have those silver dollars from New Year's Day 1937, or that anybody would ask him about the Monte Carlo all these years later. I never suspected as being a fighter pilot I'd be around at 92 either. I thought I'd be a hole in the ground probably or something. He says, oh, he doesn't recall much, but he is one who does remember that gambling ship, what happened to it, 
and what these things in the Coronado sand really are, traces of the Monte Carlo, and a little bit of history about San Diego. Did you know that? The Monte Carlo was one of several gambling ships in the 1930s anchored off the Southern California coast, but safely out there beyond the three mile limit. Once the ship drifted within three miles, it became illegal and the owners wanted nothing more to do with it.